Rock Guys would like to welcome Maxwell, Carlisle, Hellion, and Solo Artist. Hey, man, what's going on? Hey, man, not much. How about you? Uh, not much. Just hanging out. Just got out of work and uh, trying to relax a little bit and um, stuff like that. Um, I really don't know a lot about you or, or the band, but I'd like to know a lot about you. Um, when you first started getting into music, what really drew you to music? Oh, man, that's a great question. I mean, you know, I, I sort of come from a musical family in that my, you know, my dad played guitar. My sister, I got an older sister. She was into music, too. But it certainly wasn't heavy metal, you know. Right. Um, they, you know, my dad was into, you know, kind of folk music and a little bit of classic rock and that kind of stuff. Um, some other family members were classical musicians, that kind of thing. So... I was certainly encouraged, you know, not pushed into it, but, you know, just encouraged, you know, if I was interested in music as a kid, you know, to, to pursue it. And so, uh, you know, when you're a kid, you know, you're in school, you know, I mean, I, I played in, I played violin first, actually, and, you know, I played in the, the, in the school orchestra and all that stuff. This is back when I was like, you know, eight, nine, ten years old, that kind of thing. Right. Um, so I got, you know, I just got into music in general pretty early on and uh you know it was just something i like to do but even back then you know you're you're playing you know music that other people are telling you to play right there's not a lot of creativity involved in it you're not really expressing yourself too much so it was really you know i, I you know i got a little older in my early you know teens you know 13 14 that kind of thing and i started getting exposed to you know harder music you know heavy metal and and you know some of the classic hard rock bands and that kind of stuff and that to me was just that that was where the excitement was you know and you know seeing you know seeing these great photos of these you know these dudes on stage and it's just like this larger than life image you know and and that was such a you know it, it was like ambitious but at the same time it was something that you know i thought man if i could do that you know that I, I could spend the rest of my life happy, you know, doing that stuff, you know. So, you know, it was kind of the same way a lot of people get into it, I guess. You know, you, you see something as a kid, and it just kind of blows your mind, and you pursue it. Right, right, right. But, I mean, even, like you said, violin and stuff, violin is, is like a powerful uh, instrument. Even in metal now, like this band Skillet, the Christian metal band, I mean, they come out with, like, cellos and stuff like that that, that are play metal. And, and, like, it's just amazing. Like, you're in awe, like, you know, watching these guys doing, like, a stand-up bass or whatever. And, and it, it really brings, like, a, a sense of, like, wow. You know, I thought metal was just a guitar and, you know, drums and stuff. But I, I think brass and, uh, you know, violins and everything, I, I think it's a great element for uh, uh, metal music these days. I think it's something different. You know? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is something different. And I like to see it, you know, I like to see it, you know, because you can think of it, you can think of it in a couple of ways. I mean, of course, it adds a lot right. to metal, you know, as we know it now. But at the same time, it's like for a violinist, I mean, those guys, I'm sure they don't want to be playing the same stuff right. for hundreds of years, you know. I mean, it's it's a way for, for those players and that uh, that music to evolve as well, you know. And, and you mentioned some brass stuff. Um, I'm a real big fan of the band Riot. Right. And um, uh, Mark Rael uh, unfortunately passed away a couple years ago, but... There's an album, I believe, in like 1990 or early 90s called The Privilege of Power, which used the brass section from the Tower of Power wow. uh, funk band. Right. Yeah, and so they've got these super, like, super tight, you know, like, horn section in there, you know, on top of, you know, the double bass drums and then the, you know, killer solos and that kind of stuff. And I, I, love, I love when people can combine, you know, different musical elements and then create something new. Right. Uh, do you think you could bring out um, different elements in music? Because, like, music these days is so repetitive. And, I, I mean, like, even my daughter, she's 15. Like, like every band, I, I say, well, who do you like? And, like, she goes, well, whatever. Right? And then I'll go on YouTube, I'll listen yeah. to them. And then she'll say, well, I like this. And I go, <laughs> listen again. And it sounds like the same band, like, over and over and over again. It, it, it's a... Uh, a sad state, and and I think it needs something refreshing and and stuff like that. Um, 
you know, you think you could bring something to the table with that? Well, I, I hope I can. I mean, I, I think one of the biggest, one, you know, one of the biggest problems that people are faced with is when you're playing a style of music that's been around for decades. Obviously, it's very hard to develop a new idea that's both, you know, fresh. Right. And at the same time, it's something that people are really going to like because, you know, there's that thing about, like, people try too hard to be original then they end, they just end up doing something that nobody wants to hear, you know. Right. And I mean, I you know I've seen a lot of that. Um, but no, I mean, as far as my music, you know, I, I hope I can. I mean, obviously, the stuff that I'm influenced by is the more classic metal, right? You know, bands like you know Riot and so forth that we're talking about, and and uh, you know Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, you know, classic metal bands like that. Right. Uh, but at the same time. From a compositional standpoint, you know, I'm trying to write new ideas and and maybe give it, you know, a little bit of a different attitude, you know, that right. wasn't there before. Right, right. I was watching uh, some of your videos this morning, and um, you know, you have a great style, you have a great image and stuff like that. But um, you know, like I'm not saying I've seen it before. But you, you definitely have great elements with, where I think you should be on the bigger stage than, I guess, whatever you're playing at the, at this time. But, I, I mean, you know, exposure is, is, is so, you know, prevalent. And you really have to really push your band. And yeah. is there really anything out there that, you know, like, I mean, I get hundreds and hundreds of downloads a week. I mean, you know, h how do you, like, I guess, network yourself. Yeah. Well, I, I think part of the key is um, connecting with other bands right. that, you know, maybe they're not doing exactly what you're doing, but at least it's somewhat, you know, in the same ballpark and, and you can appreciate their music and they appreciate yours and that kind of stuff and doing, you know, cross promotion and that kind of stuff. Um, a publicist I work with does a lot of these kind of compilation CDs, right. you know, where he'll get, you know, a bunch of bands, you know, uh, that fit well together, you know, each, you know, a track from each band, put it all together and put it out, you know, so the fans from all, all the different bands discover the other ones, you know, and that's, that's a great way to go. But I mean, a big problem, I'm based in Los Angeles. There's not a whole lot of bands. I mean, there's a ton of bands in Los Angeles, but there are not that many that are doing something similar to what I'm doing, you know, so I try to book these shows, you know, and I end up playing with like an indie rock band or something that's just not even close you know right 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 now when you first started and stuff like that and you started playing lead guitar and stuff like that uh did you ever try to like mimic anybody or look up to somebody that that you know you really uh impressed you oh there were so many people i i looked up to and, and i still look up to today i mean i wouldn't say i tried to completely mimic anybody i mean there were certainly people that i took bits and pieces from right. um you know one of the first guys this is going way back you know when i first started playing guitar one of the first guys was angus young for me right. um you know just his the phrasing and the tone and you know obviously the combination of metal and blues you know um i kind of I've gone now into a little more of a neoclassical style. Right. Um, so, you know, I've taken bits and pieces from Ingve and Tony McAlpine, uh, a, a lot of uh, picking technique I've taken from Michelangelo Badio, guys like that. Right. Um, but, I mean, you know, there's so many guys, you know. It, it's great that the guys who are kind of the pioneers of what you'd call the shred era, you know. Right. So many of those guys are still active, you know, right. and still putting out new records, which is, a, you know, an awesome thing. Right, right. One, one of my favorites is uh, a guy named Rusty Cooley, and uh, oh yeah, you know, Rusty, uh, me and him go way back, and, and uh, you know, he's getting into a little bit of heavier music lately and stuff like that. But uh, he, he really made an impact on me. You know, I, I mean, I'm not a musician, but just musically and listening to him uh, was amazing. Uh, you know, venture for me just to hear him. You know, so um, you know, he's a amazing yeah. guy. You know? No, Rusty's a monster, a monster player, and he had a band. I think his current band is called like Day of Reckoning, I believe. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, and he had he had a band a few years ago 
called Outworld, which right. I really, really like. And, and that's who who uh, I really knew him as, you know, with yeah. Outworld. And, uh, you know, yeah. his new band's a little bit heavier and stuff like that, but Outworld was amazing. It just, I guess, you know, fell apart and just, you know, uh, whatever happened there, I, I really don't know. But that was a really great band and stuff like that. Let's go to some yeah. of your music, you know, like uh, Ramming Speed, uh, which came out in 2009. Um Tell me a little bit about that album, because I really haven't heard it. Yeah, well, that album, I mean, that was my first solo album. Right. And it was kind of, what happened was I had I was born and raised in Seattle, in the Seattle area. In 2007, like right at the end of 2007, I moved to Los Angeles. Right. And so when I moved down there, you know, you, you go through, I didn't know a lot of people, and L.A. can be a very, people can be very guarded there and that kind of stuff. Um so when you first, you know, you go through that phase when you first move to a new new area of kind of getting your footing and that kind of thing. So I I started working on that album um, after having lived there a few months, you know, and I really, you know, like the singer on the album I found through Craigslist, you know, this kind of thing because I didn't have very many contacts, you know. Right. And uh, you know, the whole thing was kind of like that. It was just, you know, I had these song ideas ahead of time that I really wanted to do, but as far as the rest of the band. It was really kind of pieced together, and so the biggest problem with that album was it, it was the majority of it was never performed live, you right. know, because it was it's basically a studio project, and then uh, you know the singer you know told me if he wanted to do any live thing, he demanded a bunch of money up front and this kind of you know just right. typical stuff, yeah. you know. Um, so a couple of the songs I did, uh, you know, I did include in like a live set later like a couple years later when i got my live band established um but yeah i mean that was you know i, I still like a lot of the songs on that album but um you know it, it was you know you, you kind of have to go through that process of you know when you, you know putting out your first album and and learning from your mistakes and that kind of thing right right now in 2010 you put out speed force uh tell me a little bit about that album yeah well that album i mean i'm, I'm still very proud of that album today um it's all instrumental, and, you know, it's a full-length shred instrumental album. I had a couple of really cool guest soloists on it. I had uh, Michelangelo Badio guest on it, which was a, a huge thing for me. I also had um, an electric cellist named Tina Guo play on it. Cool. And um, she's kind of gone on to do amazing. Uh, she played with, like, Cirque du Soleil and things like that. Um but you know, it's yeah, it was all instrumental, and I was really happy with just the kind of the, the overall vibe and the sound of the album. I felt like it came out as a very cohesive album that everything sounded like it, it belonged together. Right. And uh, and that was also about about the time that I got my live band established. So it was that was a big that was a big step for me. Wow. And then in 2012, you had Visions of Victory. Uh, that was an EP. Can you tell me anything yeah. about that? Good. Yeah, in, in 2012 and then 2013, I basically had two EPs, you know, one uh, Visions of Victory in 12 and Full Metal Thunder in 2013. Uh, the first one uh, had a female singer, you know, they're all vocal songs, female singer and then uh, a male singer on the, the following EP. And that one, I mean, both of those EPs, I, I actually originally planned to do one full-length album with two different singers on it. Right. But as I started writing, you know, I started getting the material more developed and demoing stuff, and I started getting some of the vocal tracks finished with the singers, they, they kind of sounded too different, and I felt like they didn't really fit right. um, on the on one album together, so I ended up releasing them separately. But I really liked the, I mean, I, I really like some of those songs, in particular, um, the Full Metal Thunder EP, I really felt like that was a really solid statement, you know, about what I wanted to do musically, you know. Right. right. Yeah. Wow. And you're also uh, a part of the band Hellion. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, Hellion has been around for a long, long time, since, uh, you know, 82, 83, actually, and it's gone through, you know, many lineup changes, uh, Anne Boleyn, the lead singer, being the one um, original member. And the band kind of went on a very long hiatus in the 2000s. And I think Anne, you know, had wanted to get the band going again for some time, but she had contacted some of the original members and they were, 
they had you know got gotten out of the music business or, or just couldn't do it for various reasons right so she started putting a new lineup together and i was introduced to her just through a mutual friend and we started talking about you know the kind of songs that she wanted to do or, you know if she wanted to do something that was in keeping with the previous hellion material or something totally new and just kind of talking about that and i, I worked up some you know ideas for riffs and, and song ideas and sent them to her and she she really dug it you know and all that hap all that was kind of happening in the early part of 2013 mm -hmm. and then uh the you know the rest of the band came together which is a pretty killer lineup it's uh simon wright on drums scott warren uh played keyboards and bjorn england played bass and bjorn you know bjorn had played with like Ingve and stuff right. and he had all these great stories you know so that was that was really cool wow and um yeah, and then in the summer of 2013, we went into the studio and recorded a new EP. Right. And one song was released on an anthology mm -hmm. uh, called To Hellion and Back, and then the full EP was released just earlier earlier this year. And then we did a big North American tour, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's really cool to see the band, you know, having been away for a long time, you know, to come back so strong, and the reception to the new material has been awesome, and going out on the road and, you know, seeing these people who, you know, they've been fans of the band for 20, 25 years in some cases, you know, it's, it's, it's been awesome. Right, right. Now, you're also into fitness and stuff like that, uh, you know, because I read a little bit about uh, you on the site and stuff like that. When you go out on tour, you know, what is the menu like then if, if you're trying to keep fit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> besides, yeah. The, besides the dollar menu. <laughs> It's it's honestly really tough. I mean, it's like Cracker Barrel and uh, you know the Waffle House and stuff. <laughs> it's just like, uh -huh. yeah, it's no, it's a huge challenge. You know, I I I take a lot of heat from you know the other guys in the band and stuff sometimes because I bring like protein powder with me and right. you know all, all my vitamins and like shakers and all this stuff. Uh -huh. You know, that I'm like cluttering up the uh, the tour bus with and everything. Wow. But um, no, it's it's um. It's a big challenge, you know, and, and you sleep weird, you know, you sleep really strange hours sometimes, and, and uh, you know, of course, I'm, I'm trying to get my workouts in, too, right? which is, you know, sometimes I'll get lucky and there'll be a gym that's around the venue, you know, close by, right? and then sometimes it's like a, a crappy hotel gym or something. There was one hotel we were at, um, I forget, it was like Wyoming or something like that, and, um, you know, I... I, I went into the hotel and there was all these signs pointing, you know, fitness center this way. I'm like, okay, great. They've got a gym. Right. You know, so I, I change clothes and get my towel and I go in there and it's just an empty room. Oh. <laughs> there was nothing there. They, they had like just a totally empty room with some towels in the corner. That was it. That was their fitness center. You wow. Know? That's pretty bad. So you just, yeah, you just, you just do what you can, but it's, um, it's tough. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, obviously most, most musicians aren't as, as, crazy about it as, as i am but um you know you end up doing some some kind of wacky things you know like doing you know push-ups out in the parking lot and weird stuff like that but you, you just you know you do whatever whatever you have to so. right yeah right yeah i uh i actually uh worked with a guy named thor for a little bit he, he was uh mr canada and the you know portrayed don, don michael thor right yes yeah 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 i worked with him for a little while i remember him and you know like having bean spout bean sprout burgers and <laughs> like, like i was saying oh my god you know he said come on let's go eat and like you know he would have bean sprouts and like uh yeah i, I just couldn't <laughs> i couldn't handle that you know but a uh, great guy but i mean you know i i couldn't get it <laughs> going with the food you know but uh you know it's something different you know like that so what's yeah. the plans for 2015 well there's, there's a, a ton of stuff you know in the works, both with my solo band and, and Hellion. You know, as far as Hellion, we just finished up this North American tour, and we got a, a lot of uh, great live recordings from the tour, so we're going to be putting out a live album cool. in 2015, probably in the first half of that. There's also going to be um, some of the older Hellion albums are getting reissued. Uh -huh. um, one of them is going to come out in 2015. I, I actually don't know which album it is. They're kind of still figuring that out, but um, so there'll be a live album for sure and a reissue and some more touring. Uh, it's all with Hellion. And then with my solo band, I've got sort of a um, kind of a compilation CD. It's, you know, part compilation, part new material. 
and then it's all you know the, the older tunes have all been remixed and remastered and everything just to kind of you know because i've got these eps and instrumental stuff on these different things i wanted to kind of you know put it all on one disc you know so somebody can right you know it's easier for you know somebody to to get a clear picture of what i'm doing musically with just getting one album you know so i've got that coming out um and i've i've got a bunch of new material you know brand new material for my solo album that i'll be putting out in 2015 too cool cool is image a big thing for you you know it's um is it big i mean you know it's definitely something that's important i think within metal music i mean the image has always been something that certainly plays a, a role you know right. more so i mean I, I think it does in in every genre of music but there's certainly i guess a certain look or something that people expect um and obviously i look you know because of the bodybuilding and you know i got this huge mohawk and stuff i mean i look a little bit different anyway even from a typical metal guy right. um so i guess you know it i use it as something to kind of set me apart you know from from everybody else hopefully and uh stand out a little bit i mean i think anything you can do to kind of stand out in the crowd obviously that's not something real negative you know well it's definitely, um, it's, definitely you know, important. gonna be a good thing it's definitely important to me because i'm a photographer so if i got a guy with a, a crew cut on one side and a guy with a mohawk you know what side i'm going to be on <laughs> <laughs> right you know so, yeah yeah you know uh, so definitely for a photographer you know it, it image is a big thing you know so um you know um so what is you know the highlight of your career in music oh man that, that's such a i you know i've been asked that question and and it's it's so hard to it's so hard to to answer that because i'm always you know i'm always thinking about the next thing you know uh -huh. that's coming up so it's um I mean, you know, there were there were some really great, you know, standout shows on this last Hellion tour that were that were really really cool moments. Um, the recording of the Hellion EP was really great because you know we were in this legendary studio called called Total Access down in uh, uh, Long Beach, California, and it's like, you know, they recorded Appetite for Destruction there and a bunch of the classic Dokken albums. And um, the guy producing it is a guy named uh, Ken <coughs> Ken Scott, who is like. He engineered some of the Beatles albums right. and worked with the Rolling Stones and all this stuff, you know. So I think maybe that, that recording process of that Hellion AP might, might be the highlight right now, you know. But I'd like to think there's, you know, even bigger moments coming down the road. Cool, cool. Tell me the first time you stepped on stage, what was that feeling like? Well, um... I'm one of those people that never had any issue with stage fright. Right. So, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of a lot of people do, especially in the beginning. Oh, and yeah. I think some people, Definitely. they never, you know, some people never, you know, they always have it, you know. But um, it just, for some reason, I just never, I never had that issue. So it was always like, maybe it's a little bit egotistical, actually, because it's like, hey, hey, everybody's here to see me, you know. Right. like You know, one of those things. Uh -huh. But, um I mean, it was back in some, uh, you know, some school thing, you know, when I was a kid. Right. Um, and I did, like, uh, in, like, the fifth grade in elementary school, like, I ran I ran for, like, student vice president. Wow. <laughs> you know, one of these things. And, and I delivered a speech, you know, to the school and all this garbage, you know. And, um, but I never really, I just, I don't know. I mean, it was never, like, a nervous thing for me. I mean... You know, I've, I've had performances where there are people in the audience that I know of who I, you know, I I, I want to make a good impression to that person. Where it could be like an industry person or maybe like a musician that I really admire or something. Right. Um, so there have been some moments like that where I was a little nervous. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, now as far as the, my first thing, it was kind of, you know, I honestly don't remember it too well just because I didn't think too much of it at the time, so... Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I had experiences, you know, uh, photographing shows. I one, one guy, I guess he was, he, he, you know, was so scared. Uh, he was a vocalist. He he stood behind the the amps, and, and like, 
<laughs> yeah. And you're saying, where's, yeah. where's the vocalist? And you could hear him singing, but he wouldn't come from, like, <laughs> in front of the stage. He wouldn't come from his hiding spot. Right. You know, like I'm saying, <laughs> wow, that, that, that's, uh, he, he ain't making it. You know, so, uh, <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know, Maxwell Carlisle, man, it, it was really nice talking to you, and I, I really enjoyed myself. Uh, it was a great interview. And uh, would you like to say anything to the fans out there? Oh, man, well, you know, first of all, thank you for having me. And, uh, you know, as far as everybody listening, you know, thanks so much for, you know, supporting music and supporting uh, heavy metal. And, and um, you know, if you've got local shows in your area, please go out and see them. You know, with the industry the way it is right now, it's it's more important than ever, you know, that you support your local bands and, and help them, you know, rise up the ladder and that kind of thing. And just, uh, you know, keep headbanging. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. No problem, man. Thank you. Bye-bye.